Hello and welcome to Dragon S Command of the Flame. This is a game heavily inspired by the Heroes of Might and Magic games. So in that regard, it's pretty similar to other home-inspired games we've seen recently like Songs of Conquest and Heroes Hour. Although I think this game is a lot more story-driven. It's described by its developers as embracing some roguelite elements. And by that, it means each time you start a new mission, you'll be given a choice of different bonuses for your main hero, as well as a choice of which loadout of creatures you'd prefer to go for. So each playthrough should be fairly unique. But unlike full-blown roguelike games, you're not really going to face too heavy consequences if you do lose a mission. Uh, you will just return to your home base and be given the opportunity to take another loadout and try again. So in this video we're going to be playing the tutorial which is going to explain some of the basic mechanics of the game. And then we're going to play the first mission of the game which should kind of show you the gameplay loop of what you can expect from a typical mission. The actual story of the game is best explained by the opening cutscene. So we're going to jump in. We're going to start a new game and... Since I have already tried doing a test run on normal difficulty, we're going to be stepping up and going to hard difficulty just to see what that's like. So let's jump in and see how it goes. In ancient times, the kingdom of Drathea Peninsula was ruled in peace by two noble dragon houses. The regal dragons were famous for their immense wisdom, with which they ruled in wealth and justice. But it was the Var, known for their strength and valor, who defended the kingdom's borders. Centuries of endless battles, blood and destruction scarred the Vars' souls. Slowly, their humility turned to ambition, bravery to cruelty, and their brotherly love for the Regals soured into jealousy. No one knows who it was that delivered the ancient scroll imbued with a powerful dark magic, but when it was cast, the Var house was no more. A new, mightier one had arisen, Shai Var, cruel and covetous. Amplified with dark magic, the Shai Var started a rapid campaign of blood and fire. Soon, their army reached Vovensal, the great capital of the kingdom. The two dragon families fought for days and nights, with neither side the clear victor. Eventually, the Queen Dragoness of the Regal Dragon House managed to defeat her enemies. But Vovensal fell into ruins, and the kingdom was thrown into chaos. With every region brewing with rebellion, crazed beasts began to attack one another in the streets. Heavily injured and surrounded by new enemies, the Dragoness ordered her remaining troops to retreat. With the rising threat of the Shaivar's return, the Queen understood that while the kingdom required a new capital, her army would need a skilled leader. And so, she sent envoys to her old allies, the Elvish Empire. Along with much needed resources, the elves assigned one of their best officers for the task. A young, promising elf noblewoman with a number of significant victories under her belt. And so, your journey begins, Commander. I was hoping the game was going to actually tell me what her name was because I had no recollection of that, but I guess she just doesn't have a name, or perhaps we find out later. Anyway, we have arrived at the tutorial screen. And we're about to be introduced to this thing. My name is Natik Hayawan, a member of the noble house of Battle Pangolins. We're cousins of the mighty dragon race, if you hadn't already guessed from our shining scales. Yeah, this guy is really corny, but sent here by the queen to welcome you to the peninsula and he does amuse me. to the new capital. Thank you for arriving so promptly. I'm sure the dragoness will be pleased. All we must do now is reach the town portal that leads to the new capital. Be vigilant. The countrysides heave with rebellion, and the roads are infested with villainous types. Oh, but I wish that was the only problem facing... So yeah, that's Natik, and uh, you're going to want to get used to him because he is going to be following you around, and... Uh, yeah, he's a little bit corny and a little bit goofy, but um, I do find him quite funny. Okay, so we're given a choice, 200 XP or 12 iron. Uh, I don't think it really particularly matters for something as simple as this. Let's go for the XP, and we're just going to pick up some resources. Not really sure if we need to, uh, but I think we'll pick it up just in case. So this is a tutorial structure, and it's telling us that we can click on different interactable map objects in order to progress. So one pretty interesting thing about this is each time you end a turn, you have a choice of three different bonuses. One is, well, it actually varies from map to map. But on this particular tutorial mission, the choice is you can get two additional steps in the next turn, you can get additional mana regeneration, or you can get additional health regeneration, which in this case we do have full mana, we have full health, and we're good just to go for the extra steps instead. 
can't see that. Flying overhead, it looked like a Shaivar dragon. But that's impossible. Yeah, it's definitely it's not been impossible. Days since we eradicated the last of their number on the other side of the continent. Okay, so we've increased our XP, but we still need another 150 to level up. So let's go to this next tutorial, which is telling us we gain XP for killing monsters, visiting buildings, and more. Uh, selecting the commander's portrait will show her stats and skills learned during the gameplay. And we're just going to end the turn there. So one mechanic this game does have is it has a food mechanic, which is something you need to something you need to look out for because your creatures will become weaker and slowly die if you can't feed them. But for this particular tutorial, it's fairly generous. We're not going to run out of food. So we go to a university, we gain the experience necessary to go to the next level. So we're given a choice of either the basic health, um, basic health skill, which gives us an extra five hit points for each of our creatures, or we can go to the advanced restoration, which unlocks the mana infusion spell. We already have the flash heal spell. I think of these two choices, I do like a simple passive ability. So we're going to go for basic health, and we do already have two different units in our army. This is the Centaur King, which is... The reason he's not a basic Centaur is because um, he's got two stars, which means the way you upgrade your units is you merge them together. So several Centaurs have been merged into this Centaur King. Uh, similarly, we have the Ancient Ent, which is multiple basic Ents have been merged into one. So just kind of two basic units, a range unit, and uh, hmm, I think there's no reason not to recruit this guy. It's explaining this right now, so yeah, we can merge our units together, so we select one, we select the other, we click Merge, bring them together, and we now have a one-star centaur instead of two basic centaurs, um, but these two can't be merged together because they're not the same level. So yeah, let's push on. This is the first fight, which is, uh, I didn't actually check what it was, but it's obviously not going to be particularly difficult. It's a battle against a couple of Ents. As you can see, the battlefield here is uh, a square-based grid, very similar to Heroes of Might Magic 5, or I think 6 or 7 as well. Though the developers do claim this is more inspired by Heroes 3. I personally do notice a strong influence from Heroes, Heroes 5. Uh, I think there's not really much of a need to explain this too much. It's pretty basic. So these are our range units, and they can shoot. First unit to move is the unit at the top. So each of these units has two kind of statistics underneath. The red number is the health and the black number is the armor. So from my understanding, if you lose all of your armor in a battle, it doesn't really matter too much. It should just regenerate in the next battle. But if your armor gets destroyed and you start losing health, that is going to be carried over to the next fight. So you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, in this particular case, we should probably just focus on weakening the centaurs at the top there because they're the only ones who can damage us for now. Uh, this guy's going to start moving towards us, but we do have the ability to cast this, which decreases the movement range by 4 for 3 turns, which in this case, this is already a pretty slow unit, so if we hover over it uh, with our right click button, we can see that they can now only move one space at a time, which is going to make it pretty easy to hold them back. And we can just focus on weakening these centaurs. I have sped up the battle speed a bit, by the way. The, the default setting is a lot slower than this, and in my opinion, much too slow, but pretty simple thing to adjust in the settings. Okay, so this guy's still really slow. We have now whittled these down to their actual hit points, but they do manage to dodge one of our shots. Just going to put this guy in a fairly defensive location. They have now slowed us, but that should be fine. They're going to have to loop all the way around this bush in order to actually reach our centaurs, so I think we should be pretty safe. Just move in this direction. They start coming towards us. We finish off the centaurs, and we can now start focusing down the Ent. So Ent fails to do any damage to us, and we have already broken through to their hit points. We've got 36 armor left on our own Ent, so we don't have to worry about taking any meaningful losses in this fight. We take the experience, and we're good to move on. Okay, so we keep pushing to the north. We're going to grab this treasure, and we're given a choice between 12 iron and 12 granite. I don't think it really matters too much which one we choose, but we're going to choose granite because we have less of that. And uh, this is the... This is a way of regenerating mana. So we'll move towards that next. We didn't actually use any mana, but let's just interact with it as we do have... Another event. So it's a harpy. The harpy gets scared off by what I guess is the, the Shaivar dragon. I'm not sure if the pangolin's gonna have anything to say about this. I knew it. Yes. It was a of all the rotten luck. Okay. Let us hope it was just a marauder. 
Regardless, we should tell the queen at once. All right, so we're going to go to this, which gives us the choice of hiring a new unit. We can't afford to go for the griffin, and we can't afford to go for the oaken ent. So we're just going to go for the centaur. We, I don't think, can merge these together because they're not on the same level. So we're just going to stick with three different centaurs. Go to the north, and we can then go to this, which is going to give us some more XP. So this time we get the basic swiftness skill, which is going to increase the dodge chance of all our units by 5%. And then there's advanced health instead, which gives us seven extra health points, which to me is more reliable, so we're going to go for that. Then we end the turn again. Again, we do have all of our hit points left, so we should be completely fine. Uh, this is supposed to be the way we get back to, back to the base, but it is sealed off, so we're going to need to talk to the wizard at his wizard hut. Hmm. I see the queen has secured assistance from a mainlander. Well... Welcome, Commander. What can I do for you and the Queen's <laughs> pet? The Queen's pet would be grateful if you learned some manners. And for the rest of the kingdom, I see some old wizard has blocked our path to the town portal by scrawling some shaky magic runes on the stone. A clear path to the new capital? Of course it's reasonable for us to keep it protected. Don't you think Battle Pigeon? Battle Pangolin. And right I don't know how he thought that was a pigeon. Anyone from anything. Clearly not a very wise wizard. Us from getting the commander to the capital. And as an official representative of Her Majesty the Dragoness, I am ordering you... Well, if Her Majesty wishes it so. However, it's a strong spell, and I'll need my keystone to remove it. It's stored safely in the Frost Hill. Frost Hill? Why? Powerful spells require powerful components, and... This one, well, powerful doesn't really do this one justice. Why do I have a feeling you're about to send us to get it for you? What did you expect? I need time to prepare the spell, and you seem to be... Okay, we need to go to the Frost Hill and get the... whatever you call it, the key thing. So he opens up a portal for us to go through. If we look to the east, there are some other things we can go towards if we take another fight with... Uh, an oaken ent and a harpy, which I think we can do. So we'll go for the extra steps, we'll go over to this, which is going to tell us about our active quests. So we need to reach the town portal to finish off the map, but first we need to complete the subquest, clearing the way, use the portal to travel to the frost hill, and free the wizard's keystone. So we'll go to the arcane spring, which is going to strengthen us, so monsters gain the spring of max mana, effect for our next battle. Not actually sure how we check what that does. So this next fight, the Oaken Ent is going to be pretty slow, we do have lots of centaurs. Uh, the Harpy could get to us a bit sooner, but if we focus her down I think we should be fine. So first to move is this weaker stack, then stronger stack, we're just going to focus fully on the Harpy. The Harpy doesn't actually get too much closer to us. Next round begins. Again, we're clearly a lot stronger in this fight, so we're focusing down. So we're going to slow down the Ent and keep focusing on the Harpy. We break through the armor and we're able to finish her off. And let's move up to protect. Ent is pretty close to us, so we are able to do full damage attacks. Move a little bit further forward. We should be able to should be able to finish these off without losing uh, all of our armor. So extremely straightforward battle, and we can now go to the east. Pick all of this stuff up. So this gives us all our health back, which we don't really need, but never mind. Let's end the turn there, go to the next tutorial. So during our travels, we may encounter artifacts with various powerful effects. Select an artifact slot to open our inventory. Um, we don't actually have any artifacts right now, so there's not really too much to gain from that. We're going to go to the east, we're going to pick up some more iron, we're going to pick up some of this red crystal. Oh, here we go. The treasure right there, so this is, let's have a look. Enchanted Blade will increase our beast's melee attack by 2, so each unit does have stats, and we can check those stats later on, once we enter a battle, but unsurprisingly, first few battles are not too difficult. Okay, more beasts for hire, let's have a look. So we can go for a Frost Disciple, which is a range unit, or we can go for an Oaken Ent. I think this thing's more expensive, and I think it's more useful in general, 
So let's go for that. Then we've got the Arcane Spring up there. Let's go towards that. Spend the turn. So we've got the Spring of Arrows effect for our next battle. Again, not really sure how we check what that does, but this next fight coming up is two Frost Disciples, which we should be able to outpace without too much trouble. So one slight issue here is we just do not have any real fast units. Just have to gradually creep towards them with our Ents. But yeah, we're going to focus down one stack at a time. As uh, they cast slow on our Ents, which is going to make it basically impossible to reach them. So let's actually have a look at this. So I'm still not sure what the effect of that arrows thing was. But clearly not having too much trouble dealing damage to these. Okay, we're going to try and move slightly closer. Keep focusing these down. And yeah, they're still nowhere near actually breaking through our armor, so we should be fine. Uh, if we go for the spell, it, it decreases their movement range and initiative by 4 for 2 turns, which, to be honest, not really that useful. More useful if you just keep dealing damage. So we reach round 4, we should be able to finish these off, which we do. And we can start going for the next. Again, a very straightforward fight. We finally got our full range of movement back, but they do slow us again. Still, that's fine, it keeps the rest of our units safe. We can just keep attacking them with our range units. Go a little bit closer. So once again, they fail to break through our armor. Wasting their time casting spells. We actually do almost reach them, but centaurs do finish them off. Wasting the end's time, but never mind. Yeah, tutorial obviously very simple, but the first mission... We'll see, I don't really know what to expect having selected hard difficulty. Might be a little bit tougher than what I'm used to. So we got the wizard's keystone, let's first go to the university. So we reach the next level, we're given a choice of Expert Health, which takes us up to 10 bonus health, or Basic Swiftness. Again, I'm going to go for the non-RNG based enhancement. And let's start moving back. We've not cast any spells and we've not lost any health, so extra steps does make sense. We return to the Wizard's Hut. Give him the Keystone. Aha! Welcome back! I see you have my keystone. Nothing we couldn't handle, mage. Now remove that stone. Straight to the point. As you wish. Please, stand back. We wouldn't want to damage that lengthy tongue of yours. I've also managed to gather some resources to aid in the construction of the new capital. The queen named it Nuremberg. Is that right? Do send her my regards. And Commander, good luck. So yeah, the capital city of Nirembor is kind of the key location uh, of the game. And one of the few cases where you can really tell that the game is uh, made by Polish developers. I'm not sure how you actually pronounce it. Nirembor, I guess. So yeah, the, the Shivar dragon has attacked and as you can probably tell just from looking at the stats, this is not not a battle we're actually expected to win. It's one of those set pieces. We can try and weaken them, but it's not going to work out. So this is a case of sitting back and watching what happens as we're killed off. We don't have enough mana to cast our spell. So I guess we'll try and protect our centaurs, but we already know what's going to happen, so these come forward. Uh, we can try and focus these down, but yeah, 186 health, 77 armor. It's just a case of waiting to be killed. So they blast straight through our armor, drop us all the way down to 5 hit points. So if we go for this attack, the effect is pretty predictable. They blast through all of our armor. We have used up the retaliation, so similar to Heroes of Might and Magic, once, the, once they've retaliated once in a round, you can keep attacking without being retaliated against again. Yeah, we keep focusing them down, and they are able to pretty easily clear us out. We can drop the movement of these, which is not really going to be enough to save us. They go through to these centaurs, start to kill those off too. 
We have broken through the armor, so that's some progress. Kill us off, they kill off our Frost Mage. We could just go straight for the Surrender, but um... Interesting to see what some of the kind of late game creatures look like. They go for the friendly fire. And yeah, we're finished off. So the tutorial inevitably ends in defeat, and we will now be taken to... the main town of Nuenbor. Commander, can you hear us? You are... Dead. At least your body Blunt. is. Your soul lingers behind. And all we know is that the Sheva with whom you faced off recently don't use magic of this kind. So we don't yet know why this has happened to you. Her Majesty knows a spell that may return you to your physical form for a short time, but... I can't do it without the support of a magic amplifier. Go into town and order one to be constructed. This will be the perfect opportunity for you to get used to your new state. My subjects will be the... My Queen? The Army? Ah, yes. After you build the amplifier, please tend to the army quarters as well. Your Majesty, perhaps this would be the perfect time to mention the supply shortage? One problem at a time, Yeti. Return to us when you are finished, Commander. Okay, so here is what is effectively the town screen. We can move all around the town, and there are various different structures that we need to construct, and as you progress through the game, you can pretty much just keep building up this starting zone uh, in order to give yourself the best possible start in all the various different missions. That's really the key thing for progressing in this game. So the magic amplifier costs us one... I guess that's the keystone because it doesn't appear to be any of the other resources. So we spend that, we have now unlocked the magic amplifier, we go to this and uh, it says it will provide the high level of magic necessary for the Dragoness's revival spell and other useful things. So we click on this, the enchantment crystal. Intricately essenced enchantment crystal allowing for two revivals with one revival spell. I'm not entirely sure what that actually does in practice, but we have now unlocked it as instructed. We can move back. Move over to this and we are now able to construct the forest camp, which we do have enough resources for. The forest camp gives us the ability to unlock centaur recruitment as well as ent recruitment. Uh, this costs us one of each, as does this, and we do have enough resources to unlock both. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Then we return to the dragoness. The amplifier seems to be working well. When you are ready, come to me and as to your mysterious condition. After our battle with the Sheva, our previous capital of Vovensal had to be abandoned. If you ever have the misfortune to visit, you'll see why. Lava flows through the cobbled streets, and the buildings are ever aflame. He's so corny. This is the site of the Great Library. If there are answers to the questions you have anywhere, you'll find them there. Okay, we need to reclaim the kingdom. Our fate is tied to that of the kingdom. So this is introducing the first mission, facing a supply shortage. Food is not reaching the capital. The granaries over at Ferran, which is the first location we're going to go to, need to be unblocked. Your grace. I, uh, I, I probably shouldn't. Excellent. It's settled. Matik will lend you his expertise. Return to Nuremberg when you are done. So yeah, I think Natik is going to follow us through the whole game, so... Uh, I think you need to... need to very much be able to tolerate his general, uh, goofiness, I guess. So, here we have the choice of how we're going to kind of load out this first mission. So we have a choice of 10 movement points versus 9. That is not an insignificant difference, but 10 mana versus 30 is obviously quite a significant difference. 
We have a choice of skill. So there's basic stealth, which gives us the, the blur spell. And there's also basic strength, which gives us Berserker's Rage. I feel like of the two... So this first mission, you do actually have a bit of a choice you need to make, which is whether to go for the kind of challenges. And one of the challenges is to not use centaurs. So I think for that, if we're going to have Ents, we want those Ents to be hard to hit because they're so slow. So I think we're going to go for this choice on the left. Then we have turn bonuses. We have a choice of additional steps, bonus iron, and we have to pick a third, but we only have one choice, which is bonus dodge. Uh, if we look at this one, it's the same thing, so it doesn't really make too much of a difference at this point. As you progress through the game, I assume you get a lot more choice. So, three resources. Determines how many resources of each kind the commander can take with her back to the capital after finishing a mission. Movement points to 10, mana of 10. I think even though there's obviously a significant difference in mana, the extra movement points plus the blur spell will be very helpful to us. We have a choice of which talent to take with us too, and again, not too many choices. We just have to pick the tree ent talent, which is going to give them additional shield and additional melee attack. So we've activated that, we now have to choose which artifacts to bring. So we only have the enchanted blade of course, so we're going to go for that. Then we go across to the army, we have to fill up the two slots, so we can go for two centaurs. We can go for two ents, or we can go for a mix of both. So for this first mission, there is an incentive to go for purely ents. So we're going to go for that. We press apply, and we're ready to go for the first mission. So we venture to Firan, where we need to secure three granaries. So this is the world map screen, and we can see Firan, the first mission, just there. So in order to get the maximum rewards, we need to fulfill three quests. One is to emerge victorious, having killed all enemies. One is to emerge victorious without deploying centaurs in our army. And the other is to emerge victorious without the commander having learned the speed skill. So, we're currently able to go for all three of those. But the main one to go for is just to secure three granaries. That's the kind of basic we need to do to actually complete the mission. So let's jump in. Okay, so we've arrived. We need to secure the three granaries. The Queen seems to have supplied us with plenty of rations for the mission. And it's yeah. common knowledge that an army marches faster when it's hungry. They're gonna introduce the feeding mechanic. So the army needs supplies to stay fighting fit. Each turn consumes one supply. Check your supply levels in the top right corner. So if we run out of supplies, our beasts will start to weaken, which is probably going to be a much bigger problem later into the game. But of course, this being the first mission, it's, it's fairly generous. Be careful. This pack looks strong. We need to gather more troops before we attack them. So two Tauruses and two Mud Gremlins. Mud Gremlins are ranged creatures. Tauruses are kind of the opposite of um, Ents. Instead of slowing opponents, they increase the speed of their allies. Or I think themselves, possibly. Okay, so a choice. I think on this particular mission, you don't really lose too much by taking longer. We can see our quests. We saw the kind of the conditions we need to fulfill to get bonuses. None of those really involve doing things quickly. So I think... Out of these choices, we should be pretty safe just to go for bonus iron and to just kind of build up our supply. Okay, we're gonna go talk to the wizard, see what he wants this time. We meet again, Commander. I see the reports of your death were greatly exaggerated. I know that great hunger has struck the capital. Your troops must be starving. I could feed them. It's not that I don't trust you, wizard, but what's the catch? Still traveling with your talking pet, Commander? Well, it's not in my nature to judge. I'll help you all the same. Along the western path, you'll find a centaur tribe. They promised to deliver a package to me, but the food shortage must have hampered their efforts. Okay. I see where this is going. We aren't your errand boys, wizard. The centaurs are loyal subjects of Her Majesty. It is your duty to... You've heard of a win-win situation. This is a win-win-win. Okay, so we have picked up an extra mission, the Hungry Tribe mission. Share the rations with Loyalist Centaurs and retrieve the Wizard's package. So we have a choice, we can either go to the east or we can go to the west. There is a lot more to the west by the looks of it. Uh, there are beasts for hire if we go slightly to the east, but there are also beasts for hire if we go to the west. Uh, looks like, if we actually have a look... 
We can see a Harpy on top of that, but also one on top of that, so I'm not sure if they're offering the same units or not. Let's go to the north, let's pick up some more supplies, so that's plus three. I guess this is one reason to maybe not go for the iron each time, is it's going to slow us down, so we will get through our food more quickly. And perhaps that's the main reason to keep going for additional steps. However, until we reach this, I think there is a good argument for going for extra iron. Just to get as many units as possible. So there's a fight just here, which is two mud gremlins. I think we should be able to take those on, and it will give us some more, uh, some more food supplies and some more resources in general. The big fear here is if they actually manage to break through our armor, they do cast a spell on us, which is decreasing our dodge chance by 50% for three turns, but it doesn't actually slow us down, so it's not, not a huge problem. As long as they don't get through our armor, we should be fine. We can see they don't really do too much damage to us, but we haven't yet moved into their kind of deadly range. And as we get closer, they do start doing more damage. Should have really waited there because we do end up taking more damage the sooner we get close to them, but we've still got plenty of armor left. We're clearly a lot stronger than these, and we should be able to finish them off. Finish them off without taking any losses beyond just our basic armor, which should all regenerate. And this is going to get us a lot of extra resources just to kind of kick things off. So we go to this, we have a choice between granite and iron. I think we have less granite, so we'll go for that. Three extra supply, a bit of extra granite there, and let's go for plus two iron. Then we go over to this, which is another plus three iron, and let's go over to this, where we get to hire a new unit. So we know we can't go for centaurs. The other units we can go for are much more expensive, so we're not ready to hire anything from there just yet. Go to the university, which gives us a level up. So you have a choice, we either go for advanced stealth, which gives us overdrive, which I'm not sure exactly what that does, or we can go for basic strength, which gives us berserker's rage. I am curious about overdrive. Let's go for that. I think we have plenty of strength using ints. Okay, so we picked up what I think is an artifact shard. This will explain. Artifact shards are found hidden all across the world. Forging them in the forge at the capital might yield powerful results. So this next fight is two oaken ends, which is pretty much the same as what we have. I'm hoping if we position ourselves well enough we'll be okay, but... There is a risk. There's an obvious risk that they would be able to get through our armor. Spring of Arrows effect. Again, I'm not sure exactly what that does. I'm not sure what I'm missing with that. Artifacts for sale. I think we just chance this because we do have some mana, which will give us our health back. Okay, so they slow us down. We are clearly stronger than them. We do have better stats. We're going to move our two units together. I think what we should do is we should slow one of them down and just try and focus down the other both stacks at once. So this guy moves towards us way faster. He can reach us next round, but I think if we pull back, we should be safe for now. Then this guy's stuck in place, so let's wait. They choose not to move forward, so we're just going to go for defense, which is going to give us bonus defense for this turn. They move slightly closer, but not too much. Okay, so the choice is here. Overdrive increases dodge chance of a target beast by 10 each turn for up to four turns. So that could be pretty good. There's also Blur, which is a pretty simple uh, increase of 30%. I think Blur seems more useful at first. These guys are going to have to come in towards us. These guys are still slowed. I think we just bring these two together. See if it comes towards us. Okay, so these guys are back to having their full movement. I think it probably is worth spending the turn just to slow them down. Then we can go in for an attack with these, which I think would be fine. So we've almost got through their armor. We're going to go for Blur on these. Yeah, so she talks kind of fast because I have increased the speed of battle, um, which does affect the voice clips too, which is a little bit strange. Uh, but I think... Yeah, like I said, the default speed of the game is a bit too slow for my liking. Okay, so we are able to finish these off. Both of our Ents have the same amount of armor. 
So there's not really an obvious choice to go towards these with. I think we wait for now. Let them come closer. We can go for the attack. But this is the end of the round. So the way it's going to work is our first stack moves, then their stack moves, then our second stack moves. I think we don't engage. I think we move forward. Okay, we don't get the chance to defend. Okay, so next round begins. We're going to go for the attack. We lose all of our armor, so we are through to our hit points now. And this is a little bit bad. Because we can't reach with this stack. We're going to go forward. Okay, so we're starting to take damage to our health. We don't have the ability to heal up. So I think we're better off going for defense, or we could just move away, which might be a little bit safer. Although I think defending does make more sense. So we defend. We send these guys in. They're going to try and focus down our stack, which is unfortunate, but not much we can do. So we have lost some of our health, which is a bit of a problem, but we will have opportunities to get it back. Okay, so if we look at this, we can increase our maximum mana just there. There's also an abandoned mine, which is going to give us extra resource production. So none of our end turn abilities actually give us our health back. We're going to go for extra steps. Look, the centaur camp. I've never seen centaurs that thin. Poor souls, they must have been starving for weeks. Okay, we give them some supplies as they give us. I was a little bit worried about this because I think in my first playthrough they did give me centaurs, but in this case they are going to give me Ents. They also give me the wizard's package. So we now have three separate Ents. Let's see what happens if we combine two units where one of them doesn't have full health. So we combine them together and we do get all of our health back. We now have an aged Ent and an oaken Ent. Aged Ent obviously being better. Okay, so we're good to start moving back towards the wizard. Let's also see the situation with the recruitable units. So we've got six supply left, which is not going to last too long. We're going to go for the additional steps, although we are just about to go to this. So we can see... We're still a way off. So we need six extra granite and three extra iron. So there's some resources just there. I think that's granite. And I think that's ore. Take these on, we need to take on the Mud Gremlins, which should be fine. Let's go for the extra steps. And let's just go straight for this. We can buy artifacts there. Which I guess we can take with us after we complete the mission. So let's see what's available. So the Lucky Horseshoe increases the movement points available to our hero by one. We can't afford to buy it. I think we just skip that. So these things I think we've established are not going to be strong enough to break through our defenses. Just going to rush straight forward. So they are going to focus down our stronger stack, which is fine. Yeah, there's pretty much no chance of breaking through. Don't think there is an auto battle option, so we do have to play these things out. Okay, they're clearly not going to break through the armor. There we go, finish them off. Bit of extra experience, not enough to level up, but does give us access to the extra resources. Okay, so we're going to once again go for the extra steps. Move up to this. There is an artifact just there. Let's see what it is. So we actually get the lucky horseshoe. Just completely on our own. Bit of extra supply and a bit of extra granite. Yeah, not much point buying the, uh, the Lucky Horseshoe. Okay, so the Harpy is fairly affordable. I'd be tempted to go for the Griffin because the Griffin is really good. Harpy does come with a couple of spells, one of which is Blur. The other is Exhaust, which decreases melee and ranged attack power of a target monster by 50% of its base attack for three turns. So that's pretty good. However... I wonder if just another Ent would be more useful. I'm going to go for the Ent, which is more expensive, but I think that's fine. Okay, so we're going to go for additional steps once again. We're going to pick up some more resources. And let's see what else we can do. So this fight is not entirely straightforward. 
We go to this, which gives us our health back. Probably didn't need to do that, but never mind. So there's a mountain thing just there, which is very intimidating looking, but of course it is mission one, so I'm guessing the game's not going to be that harsh. So do you want to go to the portal? I guess it's time. Let's go for it. Let's go for some extra movement. Let's return the package to the wizard. Ah, just what I needed. Thank you, Commander. Aren't you interested in the fate of the Centaur tribe? Would I be wrong to assume that your presence means that their problems are taken care of? Ah, and if you're set upon by hunger again, Commander, I hear in the old days our ancestors actually ate pangolin. We're leaving. So I think Natik is just going to get bullied for the entire game. Even taste good. So if you don't like Natik, you at least have that consolation. Sent over someone other than this old coot. Okay. Say that the whole kingdom was once connected by portals like that. So we have a battle, that which is two juvenile hydras. Was lost. Unless that old coot the wizard is hiding something. So the juvenile hydras are not actually that difficult to kill. So we should be good to go for this. Uh, we can combine these two together, however, probably makes more sense to do that after they lose some health. So they really do have surprisingly high movement, which is very jarring if you're used to Heroes of Might and Magic 3, where Hydras are very disappointingly slow. Heroes of Might and Magic 2 in particular, they really are incredibly slow. But yeah, in this game, Juvenile Hydra is very fast. To be fair, maybe... Non-juvenile hydras are a lot slower. Yeah, we kill these off with absolutely no problems. Okay, so we almost level up, but not quite. But we do, of course, unlock a lot of extra resources and things. So let's move to the east. So three extra supply. And an extra plus one. Some more resources. 200 XP or 12 granite. We're going to go for the granite. Go to whatever this is. So training center. We can better our end of turn bonuses. So we can go for bonus better steps for plus four steps per turn. Or we can go for bonus dodge. I think I prefer better steps. Seems more versatile. Maximum mana has been increased by 10. So the fact that we went for the lower mana option at the start of the game really doesn't matter too much. Let's go back through. So let's check on these again. So we need 24 iron by griffins. 21 iron by harpies. So clearly not good enough to go for that. Okay, so this fight with the Tauruses and the mud gremlins we might be strong enough for. But if we break through, there's not actually too much up for grabs. So we might be better off going for these fights instead. So two Tauruses and a Mud Gremlin does seem more straightforward. Did we actually claim this? I think I forgot to claim this, which I apologize for. Um, but it's not really worth going back. So we're going to move in this direction instead. Then we end the turn. We're going to go for our bonus footsteps. If we go to the east, there is the Okanent and the Mountain thing, which they're not really guarding too much, and we know there is the, the bonus for finishing off all the creatures. So I feel like that's probably worth going for. Yeah, we'll see what the Mountain thing does. If we do lose some hit points, we can of course just merge our creatures. So Mountain thing, 15 shield, 30 health, 20 mana. Has the ability to heal the Ents. But yeah, his stats don't look particularly good, so we're just going to move these units together. They slow us down, that's fine. This guy's going to attack us on his own, that should be pretty straightforward to deal with. Let's go for this attack. They do quite a bit of damage. So end starts coming closer, I think we slow those down with our weakest stack. We don't want to take retaliation. Then we move forward. Move forward with these two. 
So we do manage to dodge, and we can send in our strongest stack to finish these off. These guys need to pull back, and our other two stacks should be fine for this. Yep, so we still got plenty of armor left. Definitely worth taking this fight. Not losing any hit points is really the Heroes 3 equivalent of uh, not losing any units. Okay, so we've leveled up. We have a choice of Basic Restoration or Expert Stealth, which gives us Poison. Poison sounds really interesting because it seems like it could be a pretty good replacement for not having any range units. However, being able to heal is obviously really useful. I'm going to go for Expert Stealth, but I'm doing it reluctantly. Okay, we go to the south, we are going to go up to whatever this is. Doesn't actually tell us. Go for the additional steps once again. Move on to this. Okay, so that unlocks that, that's good to know, that's how those work. Some extra supplies. So we're pretty close to affording some more units. Artifact keystone just there. Treasure, so we've got the arcane puzzle box which randomly increases one of the following stats by three each battle, attack, dodge, magic resist, and move range. So if we get extra move range on our Ents, that's going to be incredibly good. So this choice we go for the iron for sure, and we can now afford... Can now afford some extra units for sure. Go for the extra steps. So there's a Winter Elf which appears to be a range unit. I hope we get the extra movement. But if we don't, we should be okay. We can of course merge our units together. Okay, so they fail to do any damage. Let's see what Poison does. Oh, okay, so it just decreases their dodge chance. That's not very useful. Okay, we're going to move in this direction. Let's try and close this down as soon as we can. Harpies come forward. So they can't really move too far, but I don't really mind the fact they can attack me. I'm going to try and slow this down, that's fine. Just go forward. Okay, so these guys start to do some damage to us. They have the, the ability to increase the range attack of all beasts on the field by 5 for 3 turns. But since they're the only range units there are, we don't really need to worry about that. Okay, we're going to go for this attack. Move around, finish them off. Not quite. Okay, so we finished them off with the retaliation. We're going to move forward. Still got plenty of armor. We can go for this attack. And... No, I think it still makes sense just to really close these down as soon as we can. So we go towards those. We're going to slow these. Then we keep moving forward. So we still got most of our armor, let's go for this attack. These guys have 22 armor, so they're pretty safe to go forward. Keep attacking these. So they still do a fair amount of damage to us from close. So we're going to wait with these two stacks. These come slightly closer. 13 armor on these is not great, but... I think this is still probably worth going for. So then we can go for the second attack, no retaliation to worry about. They do break through our armor, so I think now we go for defense. Please focus them down. Start bringing these back. We'll defend again. So they do fail to break through thanks to our dodge, and we can finish them off. So we have lost one hit point to one of our Ents, which I think is, of course, not really a problem. Definitely worth it to get through to this. Okay, a bit more armor there, and we can hire some more units. A bit more supply. Okay, so the choice is we have the ability to recruit a mud gremlin, which could be kind of interesting. It does give us the option of a ranged creature that isn't centaurs, but griffin's really good. 20 shield, 20 health, and pretty much the ability to go anywhere on the map, anywhere on the field. We can actually afford to buy both, so let's just do that. Pick up the resources and start coming back, and at this point, we're definitely strong enough to take on just about anything. 
So we have not enough resources to recruit any more units, but I think that's fine. Not worth going back for the mine, so let's just move on. We probably can go for this fight. And I think we should, because it saves us having to come back. I'm wasting too much supply. Okay, so the Mud Gremlin only really has 9 armor, which might be a bit hard to protect. However, Griffins can fly across the entire field, as you can see. So if we wait for the Tauruses to get closer, these guys do have the haste ability, which means they will move pretty close to us. But as soon as they do that, they open up the Mud Gremlins for us to attack. Okay, so not too much to do here. I think we just go for a ranged attack against the bottom stack. Then we're going to wait with these. So those two haste themselves up. Let's just check they can't reach us. Yeah, so they can't reach our Mud Gremlins, so that's okay. Let's just move forward. Okay, so we have to make our move. Once the next round begins, it's going to be our Mud Gremlins first, then their two Mud Gremlins, then our Griffins again. So we can go in and attack, and then come back. But I'm not sure that's the best option, although it's probably fine. We go for this, do lots of damage to them, and these are free to attack. I'm gonna go for the bottom stack. So the way through has been opened. These guys have lots of movement, there's not really too much we can do. So best thing to do is probably just to pull back, let them attack the Ents. Because yeah, 16 armor is not going to go as far. Okay, they managed to dodge our attack, that's kind of annoying. Okay, so let's just go for this attack on this, because I do worry they'll break through our armor on that side. Then we'll go for this. This is probably not the best way to go, because they can get through to our mud gremlins, but... Probably not too much we can do about that. Okay, so mud gremlins turn, there is no way we can escape. What else could we do? We could go for Blur. Try and keep them safe if they do get attacked. Then we're going to do 15 damage, 93% chance. I think we do just have to kill these off as soon as we can. They do go through to the Gremlins, but the dodge does kick in, does keep us safe. And on those two, so that's perfect. Let's just go forward towards the Gremlins. Bring these down in this direction. Then, next round begins. These guys are just going to defend. They attack the Griffins. So, Griffins are free to attack anyone on the field, but I think... 15 damage with a 93% chance, we should go for this. Oh wow. Okay, so they do a lot of damage to our Griffins. So we have lost some hit points. However, that should be it, because the Mud Gremlins shouldn't be able to do too much to our Ents. But yeah, that's not good for the Griffin. Minus 8 hit points. So I think we did just level up, so hopefully we get the chance to heal up. Okay, so basic health increases the hit points of all beasts in our army by 5, which doesn't actually help us that much in terms of keeping our Griffins alive, but... We should be able to just go out of our way to protect them in the next fight. Okay, so we claim some more supplies, so we're going to go for additional steps once again. The Firan forests are renowned for their vast gardens and fertile soil, and are the main supplier of food to the entire kingdom. Legends say that a great battle was fought here, and the rivers of dragon's blood imbued the soils with magical properties. Okay, so we've claimed the first of three, we get a couple of extra supplies, and I think at this point our supplies are good enough that we should probably start going for extra resources, or even extra dodge. We can't quite afford to go for the harpies. So I think next thing to do is just to go back in this direction. Then I'm not sure we're going to take a fight next round, so let's go for extra resources instead. Go pick up the treasure. So a choice of 12 iron or 200 XP. 200 XP won't get us to the next level, so let's go for iron for now. Then we go to this. 
So after finishing the main quest, we can come back safely to the capital via the town portal. Okay, so this time around, I think bonus dodge... Is that one of the quests? I can't remember if that's one of the quests. What does this tell us? So the challenges are to emerge victorious without deploying centaurs, to emerge victorious without the commander learning the speed skill, and to emerge victorious having killed all enemies. So extra dodge is completely fine, and it will help us in this next fight. Okay, we're going to go to this first. Taurus seem to be gathering further along this path. And where there are Taurus, there's food. Let's be careful. Okay, so two Taurus and one Mud Gremlin, so slightly easier than the previous fight. Let's go for it. So this time around, we're definitely going to keep the, the Griffins back as long as we can. Uh, they do get all of their armor back, which is good. Let's try and weaken these. They are going to focus down the Griffins. We're just going to wait for now. So they go for extra speed on themselves. That's kind of annoying, but... We can slow them down. But we actually do want them to come forward so we can send our Griffins in. So I think that's fine. So for this round, I think we go over to the opposite side of the field. Next round begins, they're now going to go for the Ents instead. So we can see there is a, a clear damage penalty if we attack this far away, but there's a slightly less, slightly lower penalty if we attack the Taurus, which is slightly closer. So we'll go for those. Then we're going to wait with these. Taurus do come quite far forward. This one speeds themselves up. They can get through to our Griffins, but we should be able to block them off. So we've got plenty of armor on those stacks. These guys, I think, probably just have to defend. Uh, we can go for increase initiative of 10 for 10 rounds. Which I guess we should do on this stack. That does give them enough initiative to go first. So let's just go straight forward to this stack. Try and weaken them some more. These guys are going to wait. The Taurus go round, but they can't really get too far. Okay, so that end's not doing too well. Okay, so these guys, yeah, I think we just need to defend. Make sure we preserve those hit points. Then these guys, they could be attacked, but... I think it's time to risk this, because they might decide to go for the Mud Gremlins instead. The Mud Gremlins have less armor. Then, next round begins, let's go for the strongest stack we can. Full powered shot on these is 8 damage, 93% chance. Can't killify the stacks, so let's just go for these. Griffins finish those off. So this stack is this one with 7 armor left. Oh no, it's the Griffin, okay, never mind. Uh, okay, so we lose a couple of hit points on the Mud Gremlins, and I think one or two hit points on the Ents. No, ten hit points on the Ents. Okay, that kind of sucked. So we level up, we're offered the speed skill, which we absolutely shouldn't go for, of course. So we're going to go for Master Stealth, which gives us Shadow Cloak spell. This gives us extra health back. So we get all of our health back for all our units, so that one turns out to be completely fine. So this is a Harpy and a Centaur, guarding some more resources. Uh, if we look around, we can see the second granary there. And third granary, possibly in this direction. Over here we've got a Griffin and a Centaur, which is guarding another Artifact Shard. More resources there. So I think we're good for food supplies. Ha! They're fleeing! Cowards! Something tells me we should check the path to the east, the one they came from. Okay, let's hope the enemy of our enemy is our friends. So this fight, of course, is pretty much just a weaker version of what we have. So we should be fine. Uh, these griffins... ...could actually reach our mud gremlins. We'll have to be a little bit careful. Still... I think we should pretty much be fine. 
Going for defense is the safest option. So our griffins move next. We could go for this attack, but we're just going to wait instead. Okay, so they break through our gremlin's armor. Let's go for this attack. Try and focus those down. Okay, so if we go for this, 12 damage, 90% chance. Still think probably makes more sense to focus on the centaurs, although if we do go for this, I think we then do have enough movement points to get across to the other side of the field. 6 damage, 90% chance, let's do it. We finish those off, they try and attack our griffins, our griffins can now fly across, and that should be it, they can't break through our armor. Skip the rest of the turns. There we go, do finish them off. So they did manage to break through the gremlin's armor, but they didn't actually take any hit points, so that's perfect. Okay, let's push on, let's go to this. Let's open all of this up. See what this offers us. So the Vial of Haste increases the initiative of the monsters in our army by three. That seems okay, but let's just skip it. Let's go for the additional steps. And let's go in this direction, pick some things up. So this fight, two Oaken Ents should be pretty straightforward. Okay, Griffins are going to wait, these guys go forward. These guys too. Their Ents come forward. So with the support of the Griffins, who can pretty much go in any time they like, this shouldn't be too difficult. Griffins, of course, able to safely withdraw whenever they choose. For now, we should be safe. No, I think we did lose a hit point there, but never mind. Okay, so he's come forward. Next round begins. Almost a full powered shot against these. Griffins are going to pull back. They tried to slow us down. But yeah, Ents have got so much armor, we should be fine. Okay, we're going to wait with the stack. Finish off the first end, and second end should go down pretty soon. Okay, so we did lose one hit point on the griffin, which is fine. We'll of course get our armor back. And let's go for all this stuff. So, I think we're doing okay for red crystal, although I think that is the higher value option. Then again, Granite Supply not doing too good, so we'll go for that. Enchanted Bow increases ranged attack of beast by 2, so we'd have to choose whether to equip that. But we have more melee units, so Enchanted Blade does seem better than Enchanted Bow. Let's go onto the switch, see what that does. Where did it go? That's some pretty potent magic. I'm not sure what just happened. These puzzles tend to resolve themselves, given enough time. Okay, beast for higher up there, and some more supplies. We're clearly doing completely fine for supplies, so I should start focusing on iron instead. So, this choice... Can we afford both? Not quite. We need a bit more granite. There is the second granary just there. Okay, so two granaries claimed. Very close to affording final end, but I don't think it's going to happen. Because yeah, we can get more iron pretty easily, but not more granite. Okay, let's just start coming back. Okay, so let's have a look. Is there actually anything left for us to take on? So, there are the harpies just there. Over here we've got the, the battle arena, whatever it's called. Which should be fine. Obviously it would be very harsh if they put a really difficult fight on the first mission. So let's go over to this, so it's the fighting pit. Our ears are filled with the blood curdling screams and clinking of metal as gold coins are passed from hand to grubby hand. 
a filthy creature approaches, we have a special reward waiting for those who defeat our champions. Have you the courage, Traveller? It's mission one. We should be okay. So this is clearly kind of like the equivalent of a creature bank from Heroes 3, or any other Heroes game, I guess. So, one griffin. That's the biggest threat. And I think, since it can reach us, we need to be sensible and just go for defense. Then these guys move next. Let's go straight for the centaurs. So griffins give the Ents extra initiative. These guys get hit by... Okay, so reduced melee attack. That could be a problem. I think we just move in and close ranks. We could try and slow down the griffins, but I think there's not much point. Okay, so their ends start moving closer. They're gonna have to come in with the harpies. Once again, we're gonna go for defense. Griffins do come in, and they do go for the attack. They do manage to break through. We finish off their centaurs. Now we can pretty safely go for this. I shouldn't have done that. I thought it was my end's turn for some reason. That was a bit of a blunder. Okay, so we do finish off the griffin. So as long as we don't involve our own griffin in the rest of the fight, we should be okay. So these guys first will go for a... We could go for a full powered attack on these, which should be fine because we can slow them down. So our griffin, we don't want to involve. I'm going to send him to the corner. Harpy moves next, goes for that attack, but they're not going to break through our armor. We're going to slow these down. Keep attacking the Harpy. 28 armor on each of these. Okay, so the Harpy does go through to attack the, uh, the Mud Gremlin, which I should have really protected. Okay, these can't quite get far enough. So I think what we kind of have to do is probably bring the Griffin back. Yeah, we're going to bring the Griffin back, finish these off. These guys choose not to attack our Mud Gremlins because I think they're still under the effect of uh, the slow. And we finish them off with these. So we take a few losses there. Minus five hit points on the Griffins, minus six on the Gremlins. Hopefully we'll get a chance to get that back. Okay, so this does actually get us an extra Griffin. So we need to now merge some of our units together. Take the extra Griffin. And I think we'll merge these two as well, although... Until we lose hit points, there's probably no need. So our 39 Granite. Basic Strength or Advanced Health for 7 extra hit points. I think we'll go for Advanced Health. Not really too bothered about spellcasting. Then we go for this. We do of course want to finish off every single creature on the map in order to complete the challenge. Okay, so 10 armor on these. I think we just defend. Then griffins are going to wait. Yeah, they don't really do too much. We're going to slow these down. I think we got bonus movement from our artifact. We have that magic chest that sometimes gives us plus three movement. That's the only explanation I have for how far these ants are moving. Okay, let's focus down the centaurs. These guys have been slowed. We can use some more. Okay, so griffins keep killing off the centaurs. They do manage to block, but we still have our armor, so we're fine. Then I think we wait. They can't move too far. We send these forward. And yeah, the extra movement is making an incredible difference. The Ents in particular. So we rush through to these, we finish them off pretty easily. Okay, they're just about hanging on. Griffins finish them off. And zero losses, that's perfect. 
Okay, we're gonna go for more supplies. More resources. Okay, so we clearly need more iron at this point. We'll go for that. Don't think we need experience. So we could go back to this and buy that artifact. But we still need more resources. Okay, so this is all unguarded. Ah, I see. The path opened when we stepped on that plate. Okay, that's good to know. Alright, so a sapling dragon. We are not too far off affording. We need a bit more granite and a bit more red crystal. The sad thing is, I think we won't have the opportunity to buy that. Yeah, we're not going to have the chance. That really sucks. Uh, so this is, I think, pretty much the final fight. There are two Arch Tauruses, so Tauruses with two extra stars on top, and two basic Mud Gremlins. I think given that we are about to take those on, we're going to go for bonus dodge. Pick up whatever extra units we can. So we need to merge two of our units together. So I think we're going to merge these two. And... I think we merge these two as well. Then we go back to this, we have a choice of what to buy, so Taurus is a lot more expensive. I think we focus on that. Then we move back across, and can we reach? Yes we can. Let's just go for this, we should be fine. So this is their last stand. They must have said- <laughs> we cut off the poor pangolin. Never mind. Uh, okay. So. Two mud gremlins, but these are very basic, so it's really just these two. These are the big threat. So, they can't reach us this round. They're probably going to speed each other up. As far as this round goes, I think we just attack these. Then we're going to wait with the griffins. Those choose to come forward. So, our Taurus can move. I think we got the bonus movement speed again. Not completely sure. So these guys choose to speed these up and these can now reach our Taurus. Can now reach our Mud Gremlins too. Yeah, we definitely have the bonus speed again. So that's not bad. Let's go for a solid block. As far as we can. And we've already waited with this stack. So we could go in, but I think there's not really too much we gain from that. We're probably better off going for extra initiative on our strongest Ent. So we're going to cast that. Then they can go forward, but it's not really going to achieve too much, so I think we just wait instead. Okay, so they try to weaken us a bit, but don't really succeed. Just going to go for this stack. This is their strongest stack, and they've buffed it. See if they come forward. No, they just choose to buff those instead. So those are coming forward too. We need to try and slow this down. Yeah, we're going to slow these down, then we're going to cast... I'm going to call it haste, it's technically not actually being called haste. We're going to speed these up, then these guys... going to go in for this attack. Okay, so they do manage to dodge us. Okay, so these guys should now be able to move twice in a row because they have waited. As far as I can see. Yeah, so this stack should be able to move twice in a row. Um, so let's have a look. Shadow Cloak increases dodge by 5, magic resist by 5, melee attack by 2. Each turn for 5 turns, the longer this goes on the better that gets. I still think Blur is just the safer option. So we go for that for now. Then these can go forward. We can actually go all the way through to the Mud Gremlins. Which might be better. Though we are already blocking them, so perhaps not. I'm going to go for these. So, next round begins. Let's just check how far they can go. So they can go pretty much anywhere they like. These guys can also pretty much do that. I think we go for their Mud Gremlins before they can move. Okay, they do manage to dodge us. If we go to the corner, we should be safe. 
Okay, they're gonna try and focus down our griffins. Both of these two units have a similar amount of armor. So, it doesn't really matter if we try and defend. Okay, they break through the armor on the griffins. These guys can move next. They've got 19 armor. Okanents can actually reach these, thanks to our bonus movement. So let's go for this. Okay, they're going to come back and attack our griffins too. Griffins very close to being killed, and we can't now get all the way through to them. We're going to try and save those. So first act to move is these guys, thanks to their bonus initiative. We're going to go for this position because it does block in the mud gremlins. Um, but we're actually going to go for the attack on the Taurus. And we'll weaken them some more. So their mud gremlins move. We can now move our griffins back to safety, although I think things could still go pretty badly with that, since they can't move so far. Okay, they're breaking through our ends bit by bit. Uh, this stack is not really strong enough to do too much. I think we just go defensive. Then this stack has 27 armor, so let's go for this. These will go for these, they do finish them off. Okay, so we can decrease the dodge of a target monster, but that's only really relevant to the Mud Gremlins. In terms of mana, we have 23 left. I think Shadow Cloak on these could be good. Then we'll start attacking them. Okay, so next stack to move is the Griffins. The Griffins can get to safety pretty easily. Let's just move across. Okay, so these guys start to focus us down. We do have the Shadow Cloak, which does get better over time. So I think... I think we don't attack, I think we defend. Same with these. Then I'm pretty sure their Mud Gremlins, being so basic, probably can't kill off Steeled Griffin. So, I think we go for this attack. Do a good chunk to those. They do choose to attack our Ents instead. Let's keep weakening these. So these things can't reach us if we go for the attack on these. So they do manage to dodge us, so we're very close to being killed. I am going to go for this attack. And we do finish off the Taurus. And we can finish these off too if they don't dodge. So we take no actual losses, we do take a lot of, uh, a lot of lost health. But overall that was fine. Okay, so we level up once again. We're not offered speed, so we can't screw up at the last hurdle. Uh, we're going to go for expert health, I think. Okay, let's see what happens. So those guys all run off. There does appear to be one last griffin fight. A griffin and a mud gremlin. So the units we've lost hit points on, we can't merge. So that's kind of a problem. But yeah, we're going to go to this. We're going to go for bonus dodge. And claim the final of the granaries. And let's see what happens. This was the last one. The queen will be so pleased. Okay, return to the capital via the town portal. But there's this as well, which is guarded. But we don't have a challenge to not lose any units, so I think even if we do lose a unit here, we should be fine. Okay, so these guys first, let's just go for an attack. We do have all of our armor back. So we're going to wait with these. Those guys go for the initiative on themselves. Uh, with these guys, they don't have enough mana to go for the, the haste. Let's just go forward. Let's move in the direction of our uh, mud gremlins. This is a bit risky if we go for this. I wonder if we just go for... go for blur. Try and keep them safe. Then we go for this attack. So they do manage to hit us, and their griffins are going to go for our griffins, but we do have some armor for now. Let's try and weaken these. Okay, so griffins get to move first, I think, to be honest. Best option is just to try and get these to safety. Their griffins might follow us, but we'll see. I'm going to send these in to protect. Send these forward. Yeah, their griffins do go into chase ours down. 
uh, the dodge does protect them. Go for a full powered shot on these, we break through the armor. Then we send these back. Hopefully kill these off, they do manage to dodge, but we do have some armor. Send these in for these. We can pretty much finish those off, guaranteed. Then I don't, I don't actually think the AI is smart enough to run away, but we're going to try and stop that just in case. So they do choose to attack us, then we kill them off with the retaliation. And I think that was the final fight for the challenge. Let's have a look. So we have killed all enemies, so we know that's complete. We don't have the speed skill, and we haven't deployed centaurs. So let's go through the portal. We know it doesn't lead to any other enemies because we have killed the last of those off. Then we have 21 food left, so we clearly did completely fine. We go back to this, and the mission is now complete. So all three challenges successfully completed. We have taken back three of each resource, as well as three artifact shards. And we've taken back um, the actual artifacts, we got two. So we've got the bow, the horseshoe, and the, the magic box, whatever it's called, which did prove to be really useful. Return to the base, we've got our reward, which is two of those red things, uh, two of the artifact shards, and blue things. I'm still learning, obviously. A bit more for that too, and a bit more for the third and final challenge. So that was the first mission perfectly completed. And let's see what happens next. I accidentally skipped that, but it's pretty obvious what she was saying. Among those arriving with the carts was a master blacksmith, eager to support us with his craft. But we have more serious matters to attend to. I ordered Matik away to Firan with an enchanted urn, to find out if the rebels are afflicted with the same curse that was cast upon you, Matik? Our greatest fears came true, my queen. The souls of the rebels were anchored, just like the commanders, and rushed to the urn when I opened the lid. This is truly grave news. It means that the curse has likely laid waste to my entire kingdom. But there is no time for grief. Commander, I will order my subjects to prepare for the construction of a shrine for the Wonderful idea, my queen. I can only imagine that a stone urn is a most inhospitable... And lastly, your next mission, Commander. While you were away in Firan, my new army successfully took the gates of Norita. Our scouts have warned us that large numbers of rebels are gathering near the gates, though. Without... Okay, so go to the gates of Norita and protect them from the rebels, I guess. Okay, so we now have the option of building up the town a bit more, so there's the Shrine of Souls. Shrine to shelter the souls of rebelling beasts affected by the curse. Someday we might find a way to free them. Let's unlock this. Let's go in. So we have already successfully completed a couple of these kind of... I guess they're like mini quests. So we've collected five souls of mud gremlins. So that gets us... a bit of a small reward. This thing too for the Ents. So more rewards for our town. We go across to the Ancient Forge. We don't actually have quite enough to unlock that. If we look around this a bit more, the magic amplifier, we do have the option of increasing the minimum and maximum amount of resources available through the revival spell by one. So I assume that's the amount we can bring back, I'm not really sure. Then if we go across to this, we can unlock harpies, so we can bring harpies with us, and we can also unlock griffins. I think I do want to unlock griffins for sure. Those do seem like a really good unit to bring with us. And... Yeah, so the next thing to do is the, the Gates of Noita, which does require us to pick, uh, pick our new loadout. But I think we have done enough for this video. So I hope you guys found it interesting. I will leave a link to the Steam page in the description if you'd like to buy the game. If you are keen on this game, do let me know, and I will consider making more videos of this. And if I do, you will find a playlist link in the description. And regardless of whether I do decide to do that, you will find also a playlist link in the description to another playlist which will contain many other similar standalone gameplay videos. You can also subscribe to the channel if you're interested in seeing more content from me. That is going to be all for now. This was Dragoness Commander of the Flame. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.